So good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, for taking the time to to be with me today. Um, hopefully, everybody is uh, has enjoyed the sun. Uh, looking out of my window, I can see uh, it's, it's gone a little bit quite cloudy um, at where I am. But hopefully, uh, for some of you, you're still enjoying that that good weather, and uh, hopefully, everybody's staying safe. Uh, and we're starting to see the back end of uh, of this this horrible uh, pandemic situation. Um, but uh, it'd be good to. Uh, Good to be able to get out and actually get back to uh, to, to normal, really. So, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody's staying safe. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to cover off some of the um, the, the basics of um, oops, of um, <coughs> storing documents within uh, within DocuWare. Apologies, uh, apologies for that. I had a small technical issue there. Um, it seems to be uh, seems to be working okay now. So I'm Andy from uh, from the UK. Um, I cover the uh, the, the north uh, of the UK there. So um, everything from the kind of Midlands upwards. Um, some of you hopefully will have met me previously. Um, others hopefully I'll get to meet you um, in the future. Uh, but if you need anything. Uh, please feel free to uh, to reach out um, as a team. I think we're all here to help in, in any way we can. So uh, feel free to reach out if there's ever anything I can help with. Uh, we're going to cover off uh, today uh, the implications of, of the mobile workforce. And we're going to look at a little bit about how things have changed and how things maybe will change for, for the future um, and how that will affect you as a um, uh, as partners and, and you as customers um, in, in where you can access uh, your information and be able to work remotely. Um, obviously, we've been forced into that situation now, but how will that how will that affect the future, I think? Um, organising and, and finding documents, um, obviously, one of our, our key pillars uh, of what DocuWare does is about bringing in those, those documents, being able to manage them in the way that uh, maybe we haven't been able to do uh, previously with more traditional files and folder structures or, or maybe even paper in filing cabinets. Um, so we'll look at a little bit of that and how we can support with that. Um, but also to, to look at um, storing documents from a variety of different sources. Um, so how can we get those to uh, to come into DocuWare so that they'll actually be, uh, be managed properly? Um, and then moving documents along a process. So how can we, we process them through so that they're stamped off and audited uh, in the way that we would uh, we would obviously hope. Um, today's session will be no longer than about 30 minutes. Um, so hopefully we won't keep you too long this morning. Um, but should be a nice, quick, snappy uh, view of how DocuWare can actually work to support your, uh, your organisations there. Right at the end, we're then going to have a questions and answers session. So feel free to uh, to drop any questions into the um, into the box. Um, I am on my own today, so um, <clears throat> I won't be answering those as we go through. But I'll come back at the end and, and try and cover off any questions that anybody has uh, at, at the end of the, uh, the session today. Um, OK, so I suppose the first thing to consider is <clears throat> why are we thinking about this? And I, I guess really the idea behind um, why we're sort of thinking about this is because a few months ago, maybe three, four months ago now, we were thrown headfirst into a new way of normal. Um, and obviously that's something that no one was necessarily prepared for. Um, no one knew was going to happen. Um, but really, I think talking to businesses, as I have done over the last few weeks, we can see that this has actually reshaped and changed what the business will have as business normal. Uh, we are starting to hear from businesses that companies aren't necessarily going to go back to their offices. If they are going back to their offices, they're going to be more sort of slimmed down and, and scaled down. And obviously, this really does affect the way we process documents within our, our, uh, our organisation, the way we archive those documents back into um, our archive stores, and then actually how we access those documents as we're using them on our day to day basis. So some, some big changes um, are afoot, I think it's fair to say. Some of those is that more employees are working from home. Now, as we said, I've been talking to lots of customers who are talking about not going back to their offices or going back in very, very sort of slim down versions. So, of course, working from home is actually going to become more prominent and more sort of um, available than perhaps it's ever done before. Businesses that just weren't structured that way suddenly are seeing this as a real viable way to move forward. So working from home is obviously going to be a big sustainable model. The lack of IT process and the lack of the stack that's there, I'm sure everybody has heard not just me talk about, but other people talk about slowness of VPNs, <clears throat> how those VPNs have had 
problems when we're trying to access information um, within our organizations. And again, I think that's something that we're starting to get to grips with as organizations, certainly here in the UK and hopefully further afield. Um, but actually, it's still a big problem. And if it's going to be a new normal to the way that we're working, then actually that can't be a problem that we drag on with us. And then finally, we obviously need to put our business in a situation where we need to be able to access information, we need to be able to share information with our colleagues. One of the days where I can stand up and, and walk over the office to, to pop it on somebody else's desk. But just because we can't do those very normal, those very menial tasks, doesn't mean that the business can separate. We all need to be rowing in that same direction. We all need to have our plans, and those plans still need to be working in the way they always have done. Obviously, we just need to work them in a different way to make sure we can achieve. So obviously, coming off the back of, of those three points, it raises some questions. And these questions, dependent on your business, dependent on um, what it is that you guys are actually doing um, as an industry, as a business structure, and how that's set out, will actually probably face um, how those questions look to you. <clears throat> but some of the key ones that I've been hearing um, about is the transition. Um, how do we get yeah, ad hoc working processes and how do we make those more structured? Of course, lots of companies have thought about it's OK. It's only a couple of months. We'll just get through this. We'll just manage. Now, OK, I kind of understand the way they're thinking there. But now we're getting to a point where maybe this isn't just a couple of months. Maybe the new way of working allows us to think of this not as an ad hoc working practice, but actually more as a actual business process that our business needs to work with moving forward. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, how do I ensure that security of information is kept compliant? We've just come off the back of GDPR, uh, and I think GDPR was it really shook the market up uh, and meant that everyone had to put a focus. Then we came into Corona and. Wow, it did it again, didn't it? It did it again. So again, we're really trying to, to narrow down on this because if ever we have a chance to mean that we can remain positive in a time of uncertainty and actually come out of the back of this strong, now is the time to fix these problems. And again, there's a, there's a few more coming out there. The big one that I'm going to pick up, um, or the two that I'm going to pick up that I think work together, um, how do I escape the slowness of a VPN? Still, for me, it's the it's the, it's the biggest question I get asked uh, when we're out. Will I have to rely on my VPN? We're struggling with our VPN. Will I have to rely on it? Um, the quick answer to you guys is no. No, you absolutely don't. Um, DocuAir is, is built in a way that we just don't need to, to, to worry about that. It's not a concern anymore. Um, and how do I not lose productivity? Probably the biggest question overall. Um, forget the IT stack. Forget the... Um, the, the kind of problems that, that we're thinking of from an IT perspective, but actually I think a lots of businesses, how do I not lose productivity is probably the biggest concern for them. How do I keep my business moving forward um, even though things have to change? So I'm sure you'll see some of that in, in how we can then structure the information, how we can bring it into DocuWare, how you can share it with your colleagues and people outside of your organization, um, and all these are things that I'm going to touch on uh, touch on today. So the first thing I want to consider is how will that be structured? Um, now, DocuWare uses what we call a document pool, um, very similar to my lovely picture of a swimming pool there, um, but actually uses that, that idea of a pool where everything can come together and then be managed in a new way to ensure that actually we're only working with the documents we should be working with. I only have permission to see the things that I should be, be, be able to, to see uh, and work with. And if actually, if I don't have permission to see things, then actually I just can't see them. Uh, simple as that. So it controls that business, but allows everything to come in that central store um, and that central location or repository so that it can be worked within DocuWare and also with integration into other products um, as well. So how do we manage things? Well, we manage documents in, in a variety of different ways and using a variety of different tools. And I'm going to pick out just a couple to, to kind of mention here today. Um, but of course, feel free to reach out to your regional sales director who would be able to give you um, as much information about any of these points 
um, uh, as you like, or feel free to reach out directly to myself. Um, and again, I'll be able to support you with the answers to that. So um, first thing I, I'm going to touch on is intelligent indexing. Um, and I think that's that's a, a key point for anybody who's starting to work remotely. We all know that for years and years and years, we've been able to find things because we store them in a certain way. And some businesses were very good at this. Some businesses actually struggled because they had lots of people within the business storing things in lots of different ways. And they didn't give that universal way of finding things. So it became tough. The way intelligent indexing works is that we come away from the idea of where something is and we start to think about what something is now when we think about that as a concept and i appreciate that we're separating two things here but when we start to think about that as a concept for me it's a really powerful idea so for years and years and years if we go back to the traditional idea of storing and, and searching for documents we've always thought about where something is so in essence if i wanted someone to find me the docuware contract for 2019 I would have to tell them, could you go to the filing cabinet? Could you go to the fourth drawer down? Could you go to the fifth section back and the 18th page in? That's fine, no problem. I haven't actually told you what you're looking for. I've just told you where it's going to be. And okay, that in some cases worked and in other cases maybe wasn't as successful. When we flip onto the other side of the coin, actually it becomes more um, more sensible, I guess. So we start to think about what's, what something is. So it makes much more sense for the person who's looking for it. If I ask them, can you go and find me the DocuWare contract from 2019? They'll still go to the fourth drawer down, the fifth section back, the 18th page in. Absolutely. But they now know what they're looking for. So much, much more powerful when we start to searching. Now, intelligent indexing really allows us to start automating that process. So rather than having somebody physically going and, and filing something away or having to make sure it's, it's in the right place or um, making mistakes so actually they put it in in the wrong place we're all human and, and, and we all make mistakes so um obviously that was was happening as well the way intelligent indexing works is that as something comes in we can start to intelligently help the users by automatically putting some of those index fields in and working with them to ensure that actually we're filing this away in a way that it can be filed easily quickly and without any sort of mistakes being made. And of course, the more the machine takes over, the less chance there is for any human error anyway. So again, it becomes a really, really slick, easy way of finding things. Second one I'm gonna pick on is security. Um, I get this is absolutely a new way of thinking um, about how we do things. Um, but the, the big thing here is the fact that we work in, in a, a secure location and a secure central repository means that actually as a business, we can be, be sure that we can put our hand on our heart and say we are managing these documents in the correct way. We are being able to store things in a way that meets our legis legis legislations. We're able to secure store things in a way that meets our own business processes and our own business standards. But again, even if we're working out of the office, that's fine. We'll still find it in exactly the same way as we always could. So let's think a little bit about that. As we start to compare the DocuWare file cabinets to the normal folders, the normal folder structure. So to give this some kind of context and as an example, um, if you work in a customer services role and you need to see all the documents that relate to the sale um, of a transition, of a transaction. So actually someone who's actually bought something from your business but you've got a colleague and they actually work in the finance department and they need to see all the information that relates to the uh, the actual approval of the invoices that come off the back of the product that you've just sold. It's all part of the same same structure and it's all part of the same business. But actually, the two people that need information need very different information. And although there are small crossovers, actually, there are some things that just aren't relevant to each other. So no need to, to cloud my. Um, my judgment with seeing documents that I don't need to see. So for instance, our, our colleague who works in the customer services department or the sales department, they may want to see things like the quote that was sent to the customer. They may want to see things like the order where it was come back with a PO or an order for that particular customer. They may want to see um, information that relates to um, when it's gonna be installed or when any, any service that we're, we're putting on the back of that. Now, when we start to flip that round and we start to think about our other colleague who works in the accounts department, 
actually things like the service on the back, the installation, stuff like that becomes less relevant. What they want to know is that we have an order for this particular product. We have an invoice from our supplier for that particular product. Can we actually go ahead and pay that? So the processes are still very, very important in their own rights. But when we start looking at how they're going to access the information and how they're going to deal with it, actually, it's important that we recognise what information is important to what department and for what purpose. Because that way we can start to bring these together. <clears throat> now, um, as we start to think about how these uh, these go through, DocuWare will give you the best of both worlds. So we can start to uh, to get documents into to DocuWare and store them uh, automatically uh, by their index data in the intelligent indexing process that I mentioned earlier. We can use the dynamic search functionality, which you're going to see in just a few moments for anyone who hasn't seen it previously. And we can focus on our core tasks of sharing documents, maybe creating um, dynamic lists or dynamic um, ways of working um, and adding new documents to our processes without me having to worry about having, having things filed away. Can I find them? What's going on with them? Um, it really, really helps. So let's have a quick look at how that, uh, how that might work. Okay. So you'll see um, I've just logged into our DocuWare system here and I'm, I'm in a, um, a test environment um, which is for a company called Peters Engineering. Now for anyone who doesn't know Peters Engineering, uh, I'm sure it's, it's, it's one you'll hear quite a lot. So Peters Engineering is uh, an engineering company. We, uh, we focus on uh, making roller coasters for theme parks throughout the world. Now Peggy Jenkins, which is the, the lady whose account I've just logged into, she works in our accounts department. Uh, and she would focus on the invoices that are coming into the business. Now, I'm going to uh, just show a couple of things with these invoices. And of course, the, these aren't necessarily tasks that you would go through on a, a normal day-to-day -day basis, but the idea is to give you the principle that really goes behind them to show you how that might work. So um, the first thing we can see as we've started to bring these documents in um, is that they've been indexed. So as I click on the document, I can see the invoice itself. And as I go ahead to try and store that information, you'll see that that index fields have started to be populated uh, within the, uh, the particular area here. Now, if ever I want to know, well, where is this information come from? Just by clicking on the, uh, the main index field there, I can see that it highlights to the, the area um, on the, uh, the document where it's taken that information from. So you can see that intelligent indexing working and being alive and well within the um, within the organization let's just jump back for a second more. because actually when documents come into our organization they're not always processed individually in the way that we've just described there actually very often we need to start working with these documents one of the first things people tend to do um, is start to pin them together and i think a, the age-old scenario there was they either put a paper clip on them or they've stapled them together. So what DocuWare does is actually we work in a way that allows us to, to replicate these processes. So you'll be able to see in our features here, I can go ahead and just clip them together. And this is very often done actually, if I don't want this to be permanent and I want to bring these documents together, but in a way that I can still see that they are different documents. So again, we can start processing these through. I can jump to different documents that are within that, that stapled element. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that, and I can unclip those as well and send them back to their original format. The other way I can process these documents, actually, is I might want to do something a bit more permanent, and I might want to staple these documents together. So again, we could go ahead and just staple them together, and that is, uh, is essentially a bit more of a permanent way. We can still remove the staple, of course, but it's a bit more of a permanent way of stapling them together rather than just popping that paper clip on them um, to be able to, uh, to process them through there. Now, the next thing I want to, to process on here, we'll notice that we've got one document here that isn't uh, green. Uh, and the idea behind that is the green ones, in essence, are ones where we've been able to intelligently index the document completely. We've been able to process that through the system without any, uh, any problems. Um, and we'll go ahead and just process those through. And that will start assigning different levels of authorization to those documents. So we'll go ahead and just 
process that through the system. And again, with that second one there, and again with that third one there. Now, the, um, the fourth one is the one that actually went orange. And you'll see that actually, as we start to come in here, we can see that actually it, start, it has missed some information. Now, DocuWare lives on an artificial intelligence layer, so that allows for machine learning. So as we're working with these documents, it does allow us to start putting the information in and allowing the machine to start learning from what we're doing there. So we can go ahead and type the information in, of course, but rather than opening ourselves up to human error and it taking up my time, I can also just scan the information I need there and it will start to pre-populate that information. So we can start to, to process that through, which is great. So what we've just done there is we've started to bring the documents in. They've gone through an intelligent indexing of being able to, to set those up and index them correctly. And then we've also been able to file them away without having to do any manual task of taking papers, filing cabinets and so on and so forth. So they're now easy to find again. Now, as we process those through, I could just go back into my search engine here and I can now run searches for the documents that actually I want to see. So, for instance, I know we processed one for a company called US Steel there. So by just searching uh, US Steel, we can start to see a full <clears throat> package of an order here. So we can see here's a delivery note that came into the system. Here's an order where we, we processed an order for, for that particular deal. And here's the invoice that came in off the back of it. Now, of course, under normal circumstances, you would give more information than just US Steel. With this being a demo system, I know that's enough for me to find things very quickly. But of course, the closer we get to the information we want, the better our search criteria will be. So that's an idea of the, the documents coming into the system and being processed through the system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to jump into one of our other uh, environments. So um, a, a gentleman called Peter Sanders. Now, Peter Sanders, he works in our sales department. And the reason I'm going into um, Peter here is I just want to show a, a couple of ways where we can start to process information or store information back into DocuWare without having to actually scan it in. And these are, are about really speeding up the processes and, and getting things moving there. So if we can imagine Peter Sanders, he works in our, our sales department and he's gone ahead and written a, um, a quote for a customer here. Uh, and we can see that quote being processed there. Absolutely fine. So as we go ahead, we can just go ahead and print that document in the same way as we always would, uh, ready for us to go and present um, uh, this, this uh, proposal to our customer. But actually by, by integrating with the DocuWare printer, we can start to run that print and we'll see that as it comes through, it will also print a copy of that document directly back to DocuWare. So again, we're not in a position where we have to start saving it, rescanning it, printing it, rescanning it, so on and so forth. Automatically, it goes straight back into DocuWare. And I'll come back to that idea in a second and we'll run that search for, uh, for Flying Tom here. The other way, actually, we can see that um, Peter's also had an email that's come in to, uh, to, to his email address there. Which is great, brilliant. We've had the, the email come in. You'll notice the attachment that we've got on the uh, the, the invoice, uh, the email here. Actually, we can't see it. We can't actually recognise what this is. I don't have a, a .dxf uh, package that would would run that file um, on my computer. And I can go ahead and just store that quickly and easily straight back into DocuWare. Now, again, we'll have our our main index fields that arrive on our screen here, and you'll see that it's gone through. The, uh, the email and actually started to pull out the information that it wants to use as index fields. So we can go ahead and just check that and we'll go ahead and just store that. So again, you've seen there that a couple of things have happened. Firstly, we've been able to store information straight back to DocuWare from, um, from our normal DocuWare scanners and we can just scan documents straight into the system. Um, equally, we've seen that we've brought information in via email and we haven't had to move anything we've just been able to go straight into our email browsers to be able to to do that um, and then you've also seen um that just going straight in from word completing the document that i would normally complete um, i can just store those straight back in as well so back in docuware if i just run a quick search within our, um, our system just run a search for flying tom which were the two 
information that came from there. Straight away, we can see there's the email that I received um, from um, Outlook that I stored away just a second ago. But the big thing here, and the bit that's most is sort of clever for me and most intelligent, is the fact that we'll remember that attachment I couldn't store away. I couldn't uh, couldn't actually view because I didn't have the right package. Well, actually, the way the way DocuWare works is because we render everything right there at the DocuWare level. Actually, even for CAD drawings and things like that, I've still been able to view them. Of course, I would still need a CAD package to be able to make uh, any amendments to this document. But actually, for the first time ever, it allows people who don't have access to CAD and other packages like that to be able to see and work with the information when they need to from any device anywhere on the planet at any time of day. So a very quick demo there. I appreciate we've uh, we've we've gone into to quite a bit of information um, on the um, on the system there, um, and I've covered that off very quickly. Um, but just to uh, to pass over to anyone, I'm just going to check for any questions. I'm conscious we're coming to the end of our our time slot as well, and I don't want to hold anyone up today. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, to fire them in. And I'll, uh, I'll do my best to answer them for you now, right now. OK, so there's a question about integration with other systems. Yeah, I mentioned integration there. Absolutely. So integration is something we would look at on a, an ad hoc basis. Um, it would come down to what systems you have what systems you're trying to integrate with and the level of integration that you want to do. So um, you saw me use DocuWare Printer um, earlier on um, from, from um, Microsoft Word there. Of course, that's an option for, for lots of integration if we're just looking at getting information back into, uh, into DocuWare. Um, we've also had other webinars based around a system called Smart Connect, um, which again is a really powerful package. Um, and if we're looking to work within another package, but actually be able to search back through DocuWare at the same time, then yeah, that's a great option to, to be able to do that. Um, the other option is then the transfer of data. Um, can, we, can we actually move information around? Of course, um, yes, we can do that. We would need to look at that on a bit more of an ad hoc basis um, based around what software it is you're trying to do. But yeah, we've been very, very successful and very powerful within that. Um, the next question I have is, will we share the recording of the webinar? Absolutely, that will go onto our website this afternoon. So um, yeah, please please do, uh, do look out for that. Um, okay, I'm, I've got another one about integration. So I guess the, the same sort of answer really um, as, as the first one there. Um, just looking at time, I can see we're, we're, we're coming up to our time limit there. So I'm going to draw today to a close. Um, however, my contact details um, are available to everybody. I'll pop them on the screen just there. So if anybody wants to follow up or have any other questions, please feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help in any way I can. Have a great day, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.